This video contains spoilers of the Chainsaw Man manga and the character of Aki Hayakawa. If you have not read Chainsaw Man yet, I suggest that you click away from this video and come back when you've done. And with that being said, let's get started on our character analysis. Aki Hayakawa is one of the most interesting characters in Chainsaw Man, and his death is one of the saddest moments in the entire manga. It's also the catalyst for not only Power's death, but Denji's descent into fully becoming the Chainsaw Man. So let's talk about it. The first time we see Aki, he's very jaded in his worldview. A no-nonsense devil hunter with only one goal, revenge. He dislikes Denji and the idea of living with him. He criticizes him for sympathizing with devils and is strongly against the idea of Denji befriending one. Something ironically enough, Aki is guilty of later in the series. In fact, this is foreshadowed when he not only watches over Denji as he rests in the hospital, but even goes as far as to pardon him for covering for power who prior tried to kill him by feeding him to the Bat Devil, in exchange for Denji's loyalty of course, something that I'm sure Aki knows fully well that there's a 50-50% chance of him getting. The way I see it, he was just bluffing to keep up appearances. Please don't take off my mask, revealing dark. Aki goes on to say that he will not make friends with devils. In chapter 13 we learn of his origins. Well, we already knew them, vaguely, but now we get to see them with our own eyes. The gun devil blows away his house, along with his parents and younger brother, right before him. Now the way this backstory was set up, it would seem that it was just an introduction for the gun devil. Only later we find out that it was Aki's actual backstory, and I cannot describe how amazing that was done, the panel of young Aki's face next to the current Aki. Later we're introduced to Himeno. We learn during Aki's adolescence, they were buddies. And her backstory doesn't only give more depth to him, but pushes more foreshadowing onto the viewer, as we get a look at him repeating his classic line even all the way back then. I'm not here to make friends. We learn that Hamino has feelings for Aki, and she's so adamant on wanting him to live a very long life. Her mindset that Aki inherits later down the line. During the events of the Eternity Devil arc, he risks his life for Denji by taking a stab wound. He says that he will not let him die. He elaborates on this by saying he needs Denji alive so he can help him kill the gun devil, something that Denji does indeed end up doing, but more on that later. Himeno all the way back then tried to talk Aki out of fighting the gun devil, but Aki isn't willing to give up his goal. Not yet anyway. We see more of his true side open up during the Katana Man arc, when both Denji and Himeno are left beaten and on the verge of death, Denji being dead already. The look on his face at not only the thought of Himeno, but Denji of all people dying, is telling. And it's just even more heartbreaking when Himeno actually dies a few pages later, sacrificing herself so that Aki could continue on living. Her death leaves us with more information about Aki. Devil hunters get used to the constant death, but he still hasn't. All things considered, Aki is still very young. He's weighing over his head in a job that not only robs him of his life, but robs him of his friends and family as well. We find out that Aki only has two years to live. He uses a cursed sword, a cursed sword that greatly depletes the lifespan. A sword that was made by another devil that he would soon form a partnership with, putting even more pressure on himself. Later, all this comes to a head when he reads one of the letters Himeno left her sister. One thing that stood out was in one of her letters, she asked how could she make him quit? Something that she has tried many a times. This does plant a seed, but it's not the final nail in the coffin to make him give up on pursuing the gun devil. Later, he forms a contract with the future devil, who not only informs him, but the readers that Aki will die in the worst possible way imaginable. But even that does not deter him. He does not care what happens to him, as long as his mission is complete. We see his relationship with Denji slowly get stronger as they take turns kicking the shit out of the Katana Man, slowly breaking free of his no-nonsense ways. Not long after, under Makima's orders, he partners up with the Angel Devil. While at first he cannot stand him, the two become very close as they share secrets with each other. Aki even going as far as to willingly shorten his own lifespan by saving the Angel Devil's life. 
he had begun to sympathize and befriend devils, a practice he once criticized Denji for. In chapter 72 is where Aki's arc comes to an end for me. He's grown so much since his first introduction. This chapter slows down the pace of the manga as we get a look into his life with Power and Denji, the bond between these three growing remarkably. He takes the two of them on his annual visit to the grave of his dead family, and he finally gets the closure that he deserved. He's given up on his dream of killing the gun devil in order to protect his new family. He was able to finally free himself of the pain and hurt from all those years ago, finally able to let go of that guilt he feels for his brother's death. In doing so, he pulls his squad, Division 4, out of the Gun Devil's expedition. It's only later he's manipulated by Makima into joining the expedition once again, as she basically forces Denji and Power to go along, regardless of Aki being there or not. Later, he's given a future that's unavoidable, one that he tries to change but in doing so sets the events in motion. During his visit to the Angel Devil, who's lost his arms during the Darkness Devil incident, they discuss it. Aki not only wants to save Power and Denji from this future, but also the Angel Devil as well, knowing full well that the organization will just dispose of him due to his lack of having no arms, he'd be seen as useless. His solution? Talk to Makima. He cries in front of Makima. He wants Denji and Power to live long happy lives even when he's gone. He informs her that his time is almost up. He doesn't want what happened to his brother to happen to them. He asks her for strength to change things. He is willing to make a contract with any devil, any contract, and thus he is forced to make one with Makima herself, the control devil. The haunting reveal afterwards, I can't even describe it. Aki becomes the one thing his entire arc has been based around, the thing that he has sought to destroy and then gave up on. Aki had become the thing that robbed him of his family long ago, and the thing that pushes Denji to rob himself and power of their lives. Aki becomes the gun devil, and he's forced to kill Denji in power. This fight is honestly heartbreaking, watching Denji struggle, having to kill someone akin to his brother, whilst Aki is unaware of his actions, thinking that it's all a snowball fight. As his consciousness puts him back in that time all those years ago, when him and his brother were about to play catch, turning into a snowball fight between him and Denji. The fight stops when Aki sees a young Denji crying before him. Remarks when he's never seen Denji cry before, and then Denji disappears. Aki looks around, and that's where he utters his final words. Oh yeah, I wanted to play catch anyway. Slashes forward to our present day. Aki, brutally killed by Denji's hands. After Aki's death, Denji mourns him in a scene that's very similar to Jiraiya being mourned by Naruto, which I thought was an excellent touch. As the events are set in motion as predicted by the future devil, Power is also killed by Denji, technically at least. The saddest part about this all, yet again, Aki has failed to protect the ones that he loved. Aki died for the simple fact that he was still sane, a concept that had been foreshadowed all the way back in chapter 19. Aki overcame his hatred for devils, overcame his guilt, and put aside his unrealistic quest for revenge, but it was far too late for him by that time. This is someone that went from wanting to kill devils in ways that would make them suffer as much as possible and detesting the idea of befriending them, to willingly sleeping in the same bed as them, risking his life for them, giving up his dreams because he's seen them suffer as much as possible. Hell, he's even concerned about power having nightmares. Aki's character growth is amazing. It's revealed that in his will, Aki left half of his money with Denji and the other half with Hamino's family. Aki was human to the very end, and he was one of the most genuine characters in the entire Chainsaw Man manga. He died with a smile on his face as he regained his childhood innocence and was able to see his brother again and finish their game of catch. Aki Hayakawa is a definition of a tragic character, and even though he couldn't save power, his sacrifice ultimately led to Denji becoming the man that he is today. So in the end, his death served as a change, a positive one, for the future of the Chainsaw Man universe. This is Grimtoki, this has been Beyond Animation, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that bell so you don't miss another video, and I'll see you in the next one.
with the micro.